When the on-air mic goes off, the talk talk begins. It's Talk Talk with Martha Quinn. Today's podcast, I Feel Christine Karina, is summed up by Howard Jones. Things can only get better. We have a guest on our podcast today, a doctor here in the Bay Area. Her name is Dr. Teresa Van Woy, and she has an amazing story of how a person can rise above their given circumstances, not let their past define them. She is also a living example of something I learn every day with you ladies, which is the benefit of positive thinking. I would definitely say that this falls underneath that category. She has an amazing story. And Teresa joined the Martha Quinn Show family by calling in one day with her totally awesome news that she was writing a book. And then she called to tell us that, in fact, she had finished it. It's her memoir called Wildflower. Teresa, congratulations. Because last time we spoke, you said you were writing a book. And I want to compliment you and give you major, major props that you completed that task. For me, completing a Facebook post is massive. So you did it. Yay for you. Thank you. It took a while, but yeah, it's finally there. Thank you. And you told us it was going to be called Wildflower, and that's what it is. So describe your book, Teresa. Um, What's my memoir? So basically it starts, my mother bites a camper, loads her nine kids in, and takes us on a summer vacation. So we go cross country, end up in San Francisco, and there she basically abducts me and three of my siblings and sends the other five back home to Florida. And so we're in San Francisco, we're homeless on the streets, and then end up at um, Raphael House Homeless Shelter. From there, we stayed there for actually a few months, and then my mom got us a studio apartment um, in the Tenderloin. So at the age of seven, um, I was then introduced to a whole new life of poverty and child abuse, and, um, and then basically took on the role of caring for my mentally unstable mother and my family. Wow. I'm silent because I'm just taking this all in. My first question is, what happened to your other siblings? So um, they went back home to Florida um, to live with my dad. And I mean, basically my dad was blindsided. He had no idea that this summer vacation was going to end up in the family being split. Um, And we would see each other on the summers. They would come take the Greyhound bus back to San Francisco and we would do summer trips, the nine of us. Okay. So what is your life like? today? Well, today I am a podiatrist in the Bay Area. I live in Benicia, have my home and my three daughters. My oldest daughter is in um, Boise State, who's also pre-med, following in um, mine and my husband's footsteps. My life is completely different from when I was a child, I'd say that. Are you still in contact with your mom? I am. Um, She's 90 now, and last year, for her 89th birthday, we all went, well, eight of the nine went to Alaska, where she now lives for her 89th birthday. And how was that? I mean, it was fun being in Alaska with my family, but my mom, she has dementia, and through her dementia, she remembers that she hates me. I mean, it's really weird, but I was definitely Uh. singled out from everyone. And, I mean, it was hard. I was crying, of course. And the weird thing is, is, you know, her hateful ways. Ah, what was going on? So I was dressed up. I had a dress on. I had my... I have long hair and it was like makeup and like tools in my hair and she goes after we had already been together for she who's that and my brother says mom that's your daughter Teresa that's not my daughter that's a boy I mean just you know ridiculous things like obviously I didn't look like a boy (laughs) right man how did you turn your life around Teresa well the thing is is, and this is what I would say to others number one you really really have to believe in yourself and for me I just knew that there was no way I ever wanted to be like my mother. I would not repeat those patterns. And you just have to decide, this is not how my life is going to be. And set a goal and stick with that goal. And really just never, ever lose sight of it. No matter how hard things are, know that you can do it. Even, you know, probably people in my situation would have to work five or even ten times harder than everyone else. But it's all worth it in the long run. You know, also for someone in my situation, 
if they had just had on that little, like, prove, just prove everyone wrong. I mean, really, because no one's going to believe in, you, in them. They have to believe in themselves. I always said, you know, I'm never going to be like her, ever. <sighs> man, oh, man, oh, man. If you're just joining this Talk Talk with Martha Quinn podcast with me, Martha, and my executive producer, Christy, and our morning show producer, Karina Velasquez, we're talking to Dr. Teresa Van Woy, who, as a child here in San Francisco, spent time in a homeless shelter. She grew up experiencing a life of poverty and child abuse. This is all chronicled in her memoir, Wildflower. Now, Teresa... You're a doctor here in the city. You have three beautiful daughters. You were totally able to switch the direction of your life. How did you get that inner strength, do you think? Uh, to be honest, I think I have a strong faith in God. And honestly, I was on the streets a lot in San Francisco, and I always felt like I was well protected, some kind of guardian angel or something. But I also went to really good schools. Even though we were very poor, I was able to see how the other half lived. Do you look at your relationship with your daughters and think to yourself that you almost can't believe that you have this stable family life? Yeah, I, I feel so blessed. And I look at not only me and my daughters, but all of my siblings. And I'm like, you know, how do we all come out kind of normal? And to me, it is amazing how our life could be right now to where it is. Yeah, there isn't a day that goes by that I'm not so thankful for what I have and my beautiful daughters. I think that's really great, Teresa, your story. I think a lot of people allow their past to define them and how they end up and use that as a reason to however they turn out and most of the time like in a bad way mm -hmm. i do find it so interesting how some people karina you're 100 percent right some people will repeat you know it will become a cycle of abuse mm -hmm. or a cycle you know a downward cycle but some people like you and all your siblings that is amazing yeah are able to pull yourselves up. And I wonder about that inner resilience, where that comes from. Is that just luck of the draw of your DNA? Or where does that come from? And if somebody doesn't have that resolve, like, I feel like I don't have that resolve. I'm not sure how I would handle that situation, even though I kind of relate because I had a dodgy relationship with my mother but not the adversity that you faced um so i had a little bit of that fire and that and my husband is the same way that we were determined that we were going to provide a stable life for our children but i didn't have nearly the adversity that you had and i think of myself and i think of myself as being kind of delicate and i wonder how i would handle it i'm in awe of how you did it do you have any advice for how somebody can kind of get that strength from the outside in if they don't have it on the inside? So my judo coach, he would say, Teresa, you have Konjo, the fighting spirit. And he says it's something that can't be taught. And that's just for martial arts. But um, I did not do well in school. And it really, it, it's working hard. Even though I lived in the town of Lauren and I lived in poverty, I would go to the Fairmont Hotel and dream. And I think when you repeat the right words over and over again to yourself, no matter what everybody else is saying, you can follow through. One thing that I really like that you said, and this is something that people can do, if you feel like you don't have inner strength to draw upon, but one thing everyone can do, and I love that you hit on this, is that you would go to the Fairmont and you would dream. And Christy mm -hmm. talks about this a lot. She talks with me and Karina about this. And Karina, you're big on this as well, mm -hmm. which is look at the possible positive outcome and allow yourself to really feel what that positive outcome would feel like and really contemplate that. And I think that's what you were doing at the Fairmont is you were really contemplating that positive outcome outcome and in a way that was creating your steps maybe even if you didn't realize that at the time absolutely it was my stepping stone teresa i'm i'm curious did your mom have the same upbringing she did mm -hmm. uh I always say to my family or friends that the pattern continues and I wonder, you know, like I tell my brother-in-law because he had a rocky relationship with his father and I said, you know, maybe that's all he knew. 
You know, maybe mm-hmm, that's, mm-hmm, you, mm-hmm. it's up to you to break that cycle. It's up to you mm-hmm. to change the pattern and, and look at it in a different way. So I was just curious because, you know, and he didn't think about it like that. He was like, I never stopped to think about maybe that's how my father was raised. Yeah, she was raised like that. I think a lot of people can definitely relate to your story. And it's a really, really great, powerful story. It is so incredible. Yeah. And like I said at the beginning, I am so in awe of you that you got it together. You wrote the book. It's called Wildflower. Teresa is a podiatrist here in the Bay Area. Where can people find your memoir, Teresa? Well, it's going to be on Amazon. It's it's not out yet, so it'll be out probably by the end of November or sometime in December of this year. So definitely Amazon. Perfect. Holidays. Yeah. You've got such an inspiring, rooted locally story, but inspiring for everyone. I mean, 2020 is treating a lot of people to rough times, and I think so many people would benefit from hearing your story about how you can rise above tough times. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Well, Teresa, shout out your website, please. Okay, www.drteresavanwoy, that's T-E-R-E-S-A. V as in Victor, A-N-W-O-Y dot com. Dr. Teresa Van Woy dot com. And uh, last time we spoke, you shouted out your daughters, Dylan, Jolie, and Jaden. Please tell them all that we say hello. I will. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us and calling to give us the update that your book is finished. It's coming out in late November, early December. Perfect for the holidays. And, you know, keep us posted, please. I will. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for calling. And Christian Karina, Teresa pointed out something that I think is a really important concept that you guys always tell me about, which is that she was envisioning a more positive outcome.